earlier in the spring, leading to the conditions we saw this year as being more like the norm. Now, it could be over the long term with enough fires happening that, you know, when you keep them from being canopy fires, if that's, the, if that's possible, that you burn out the underbrush and, and we come into a frequent but low intensity fire regime. But there could be a transition period that's pretty bad. Um, and so I'm just curious if you studied that. The second, um, the second concern I had is that I know, um, I know that there's a lot of fuel, like liquid fuel, going into the tanker trucks and the helicopters. Now, um, a few years ago I was saying there would be $100 barrel gas uh, oil, and people were like, what is he talking about? Okay, so I'm going to say something now that you might go, your internal conversation will be like, what is this guy saying? Because it doesn't jive with what we're familiar with. But I would expect that maybe, let's say, by 2020, our society, you know, the United States of America, may have half the liquid fuels it does today. Okay? So the reason I got nervous is because I'm sitting there outside with the smoke around me, and I'm thinking about the 100-something fires. I'm going, this is the norm, maybe, in, uh, in terms of a spring in 2020. And we have, we have then half the fuel available to our society. Now maybe you allocated fine to emergency services, but I was just wanting to know if you know the emergency services people had thought about climate change implications for fire and about a liquid fuel deficit for the society in the scenario of the climate change going forward. As far as the liquid fuel deficit, I can't answer that. But I can answer that is that the climate change issue yeah. is definitely being looked at. I mean, it does seem like our our falls are going longer without rain, our springs are drying up earlier. Um, so yes, that is definitely looked at. I can guarantee that. And were you planning and planning it somehow, or is it so, it's so hard to keep up with day to day that it's hard to plan for this stuff? Kind of right now, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my take on it. Okay. Well, we can have this discussion yeah. much, much uh, Of course, I just wanted to bring it up. Thank, thank you. I, 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 later okay. Please. I, I do like, I would like to wrap this part of the meeting up with um, some verbal updates from Allison Glassier, uh, Deputy CEO, in regards to celebrating our local heroes. So if you could speak to that. Sure. Allison Glassier is the CEO. Um, just as follow up to all of this and, and along the themes of, of thanking uh, firefighters, there's been a lot of discussion about how that could be done and um, wanting to do it in a coordinated sort of way. So one thing that, that the executive office is working on and we'll be working with the, with the board's office on is, and definitely working with all the, the fire service agencies, is a list of all of the agencies that have been involved, and that means agencies that came from Canada, Australia. I guess Australia, et cetera, as well as getting the names of locals uh, responders and firefighters from, from Mendocino County and then turning those into some, some sort of proclamation. So as we get that definitive list and then produce the proclamation, it will come before the board for kind of a, a, a mass blessing and then we'll figure out how to distribute it. So that's one thing we're working on. The other thing that's been talked about is the idea of doing some kind of um, well, fire, fire departments always do barbecues to raise money, so it's kind of like doing a barbecue for the fire departments instead of by the fire department. And doing that kind of on a county-wide basis, uh, talk about using the fairgrounds, talk about uh, doing it at the end of the fire season, uh, kind of as a yearly wrap-up. And apparently in other counties, they do that on an annual basis, so this might be something that we want to start on an annual basis. And what we want is for the county of Mendocino to participate but it will not be run solely by the Mendocino, the county of Mendocino. There are a lot of other groups, there may be cities, the, the fire agencies themselves, who would want to participate. So end of fire season, I understand, is end of September, beginning of October. And so in the next several weeks, we're going to be um, kind of gathering a group of interested people to talk about planning that for this fall. So wanted to let people know that that's how we were going to approach it and want to be very clear that the County of Mendocino wants to be a participant, but that it will be a collaborative effort. Okay. Um, questions to the board and, and that last update and, and celebrating our local heroes. Okay. Um, let's wrap this up. Chief, 
Brown. Uh, yeah, just one one last thing. Um, like I said, we, we're down to this minimal patrol mode right now. So the folks of the, of the county are trying to get across. We will probably have smokes on these fires easily in the next few weeks, possibly till it rains with the types of fuels that are out here. We will maintain the presence necessary out there. Uh, a lot of it's well within the burn. It's an old stump hole, whatever. It's not any factor. But the last thing we want to see, and this is why we're working so long on this, is we'll go past history stuff. Uh, we don't need anything to come out of here. And even if it burns 500 acres of timber out here on the Mendocino River Company, they've already lost enough. We don't need that to happen. But you take the Oakland Hills, five acres a day before, came out the next day and it burned up 3,000 structures. Uh, so that's why we're maintaining this presence out there and we'll maintain it as long as we need to. Um, and everything's shaping up really good. So that's all I have. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Appreciate your appearance. And uh, just for uh, an item for the public, as part of the consent calendar, we reaffirmed the declaration of emergency from Mendocino County for an additional two weeks to make sure that it carries over and, and takes in account this continuing effort. It's not over yet, but uh, I think Cal Farm is doing a pretty good job and we needed to reaffirm that and we did that this morning. So, um, any additional? Okay, why don't we uh, recess for lunch? and uh, we'll continue additional items uh, after 1.30.